Hi everyone. How are you today? I hope you are always healthy. Welcome back to my channel. Like always, today I'm going to discuss some topic that will make you wonder about the advanced technology of the past. I got this on a telegram channel called Forbidden Science. Please check the description to know more about the channel. I know that my video quality is far from good, but I hope the content is understandable. Some might say that I'm being repetitive by discussing this. But that's the whole point. This is proof that a small occult elite of the history to fit their narrative. Anyway, I also have a Telegram channel. There, I will share various information that I cannot share here. Don't forget to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel, the link is also in the description box below. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Unearthly Physics versus Earthly Logic The photo is Neil Armstrong's lunar footprint. It was left by a man weighing 77 kilograms. Let's add the weight of spacesuit A7L, best of life support system, which according to different data, weighed from 48 to 54 kilograms, and get the total weight of 120 to 131 kilograms. It is said that the gravity of the moon is six times less than on the Earth, so the weight of the astronaut in his outfit will be only about 20 kilograms. Wait, but the lunar soil consists of regolith, a non-laminated loose mixed-grain clastic dust layer reaching a thickness of several tens of meters. It consists of fragments of erupted rocks, minerals, glass, meteorites, and breccias of shock explosive origin, cemented by glass. A curious researcher did an experiment at home on similar soil, and his weight of over 90 kilograms left an imprint of only a couple of millimeters. To squeeze a few centimeters of regolith with your shoe, you have to be an elephant or stand in a layer of some semi-liquid mortar. In 1971, the Rosencruz Museum in California came into possession of a perfectly preserved mummy. The study showed that 2,600 years ago, the Egyptians had performed a complex surgical operation, a prohibitive level of complexity for that era. The mummy had a 23 cm metal orthopedic pin in his knee. Quite a modern technology that was known to the ancient Egyptians, but unknown to their descendants. Too much technology accumulates that shows the high level of development of ancient peoples and subsequent oblivion. In fact, humanity is forced to rediscover long-known but lost knowledge from thousands of years ago. So, were the ancestors so primitive if we are only reaching their level of development? Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learn something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. The Arch of Constantine in Rome Abraham Louis Rodolphe Ducret, 1748-1810 Such artists are called ruinists by scholars. Allegedly, they made it all up and painted it. That's the style. But this excuse only works for those who cannot analyze information. Let us look at the picture carefully. What we see. The arch itself and the aftermath of the catastrophe. The ruined Colosseum in the background. Judging by the vegetation on the buildings, the picture was painted 30 to 40 years after the catastrophe. A thick layer of broad clay or silt, most likely by a wave. The water is gone, and people are starting to come back. Now this arch stands, excavated in the same place, only slightly restored. There are dozens if not hundreds of such paintings, and they all depict the same thing, the catastrophe of the 17th to 18th centuries, and the loss of the ancient civilization. After everything subsided, the age of industry began, which was really about restoring lost technology, not inventing it. Victor Schauberger was a simple forester who made the fundamental discoveries of the 20th century and, with his whirling technique, discovered completely new sources of energy for mankind. 
He did not trust the energy monopolists, and was afraid that they would increase their power at the expense of his discoveries by hiding them from mankind. His goal was to make atomic energy unnecessary by means of explosive destruction. He considered it the greatest danger. For example, from one cubic meter of water, in a second, you could get at least 4,000 kilowatts of thermal energy. As soon as he succeeded, the authorities took away his research. This happened to him 12 times. Or his discoveries disappeared without a trace. In a letter written just before his death, Victor Schauberger bitterly remarked, All science with all its lackeys is but a gang of thieves, pulled by strings like puppets, and forced to dance to any tune that passes off its well-hidden slave master as a necessity. The University of Bristol holds a unique photograph taken in August 1900. The wall separating China City from Tartarus City, Peking. I would like to listen to domestic historians. China's capital was adjacent to a Tartar city. Let's say we believe that Tartary is a misnomer for the Golden Horde, but what was the Horde in the 20th century? The idea of a Tartar city is also uncomfortable for historians. China has no record in history that the state border suddenly moved 350 kilometers and another people lived under the walls of Beijing. Rockets, and multi-stage ones at that, were still in the 17th century. Fairy tales? No. It's a fact. All this was described and published by Kazimir Semyonovich, even 250 years before the appearance of Tsiolkovsky's works. It describes rockets from products with a stabilizing rod to winged rockets. It also elaborated the theory of creating a prototype of a multi-stage rocket. But that's not all. Back in the 18th century, there were legends of fights with fire-breathing dragons. And it turns out, this is not a fairy tale, there was such a weapon. Therefore, a global, and perhaps even nuclear war, could be in the not-too-distant future. Everything for this, was already there. What do you think about this video? Please like and share this video if you like it, so that more people are aware of what is happening in this world. Before I end this video, let's say thank you to everyone who took the time and energy to research this, they have done a lot for us all. Please subscribe to watch the next upcoming videos. Thank you for watching the video until the end, I hope this information is useful for all of us. See you in the next video.